Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's Jamie. So I wanted to very quickly address some core tenets of voluntarism and kind of cut to the throat of how I think voluntarism is best presented, especially talking about things like rights or you know personal rights to oneself or one's property. So to the core, I don't think that voluntarism is best presented in any way from a natural rights perspective. Here's why. Underlying every belief set is the fact that a belief set has to be adopted. Realistically, you could say that someone believes in that in some sort of natural law theory they think that the right to own oneself. In other words, I mean, you know, just saying that you exert control over yourself, that you have the right to defend your body and stuff like that, is a belief set. And a person has to adopt that belief. Likewise, if someone wanted to uh, look at things as a whole, in other words, uh, what they know, human knowledge, things like that, as a whole, look at the state of human interaction, interaction, praxeology, they could say, okay, maximizing consent uh, improves the state of people on the whole because there's less violence, there's improved health benefits because of communication, knowledge spreading, um, there's going to be less psychological stress because of you know the, the lack of consent that comes with government, things like that. No matter what way you put it, there is a belief set with reasoning that has to be adopted. And when it comes to making sound, logical, consistent points, the best thing I think someone can do, and again, this is also an adoption, you know, to think, you know, you think what I think or agree with me, is to avoid anything that is automatically assumed. Um, in other words, don't just take something that, oh, this is a natural right or something like that. This is a natural belief set because, well, it is. I mean, there isn't a big stone wall that has writings all over it that says, okay, well, natural law is this and you have the rights to X, Y, and Z. It's easier just to admit that humans can use uh, deductive reasoning by looking at the state of mankind, looking at how people uh, interact with each other, what they do or don't like. You know, people generally don't want to be murdered. They don't want to be raped. They don't want other stuff taken from them. And even people that are crazy, you know, in my opinion, even people that want to hurt others, that want to steal from others, themselves typically don't want to be murdered or taken or stolen from, um, things like that. You just take a look at those things and you can say that voluntarism is something that can be adopted. It is a belief set that can be adopted because people generally want to increase the consensual interactions with each other, even those that generally might be more of a sociopath, psychopath kind of nature. So with that in mind, I would like to take that kind of belief set and thought and thinking to uh, property rights as well. And often there's a critique that, oh, you know, if you just have it all about consent and, uh, you know, you have the government out of the picture, then there's just going to be a bunch of rich, rich people who own everything, and, and that's it. And everybody's just going to be, you know, new feudal serfs again, serfs again. And to that, I just say it's the same exact thing. Look at the nature of human interaction. People trade with each other to improve their conditions, to improve technology, to improve health, to improve social interaction. Everything. People share knowledge for mutual benefit. People trade for mutual benefit. And they do this even often in spite of government attacks on it, regulations, tons of black market activity, things like that. So summing this all up. Because all belief sets, ultimately, have to be adopted. You can believe that there is some sort of state of nature, natural rights to, oh, I have a right to my body and you can't you know, touch it or my property. You can believe there's some sort of natural state. It doesn't matter. What matters is how somebody is going to act or react, and did they adopt that belief set to begin with. They could think that, oh, you know, it was God, the flying spaghetti monster, or because you know the nature of the brain on you know exerting control of the human body. Okay. Whatever you want to call it as a basic denominator, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to realize that it's all an adopted belief set. So that's all voluntarism is. It's adopting a belief set. This is a good idea for humans to act according to these ways, non-aggression, minimizing violence, maximizing consent, because people don't want to be hurt. People want to maximize their trade and benefits everybody in the long term. The technology rises, information flows, people can act much more uh, cordial, polite, and improve their personal conditions. You know, and it's just like the old saying with, you know, the kings and stuff like that who had all the wealth. Yeah, they had a much better living condition, but compared to today, what the poor person has access to, the kings or paupers of the past. And that's the nature and, and benefits of free markets, free interactions, free people. So take that all together. I hope that kind of sums why I think uh, voluntarism is best presented from a belief adoption model and not just like, oh, it's because 
there's this underlying you know philosophy about who we are. I mean, we could describe reasons why we say there is a ownership of, of, of self. You know, we could say, oh well, by nature of our brains and acting, that creates a force that can't be undone. You know, you can't sell yourself into slavery because you're always your brain's always going to be acting and exerting control. That's you know a way to describe it. But thanks for next time. We'll have to talk more. Take care, everybody, and uh, thank you so much.